Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, everyone. There we go. Um, welcome to Art 107. It's Thursday, February 17th. Um, I have one announcement, and that is that uh, sometimes after class, I can get sidetracked and forget to upload the lecture video. If that happens, feel free to send me an email. I got an email at some point on Wednesday morning, and it was like, hey, where's the lecture video? And I, I thought to myself, I don't know. I guess I better post it. Um, so obviously, that doesn't happen too often. But if it does happen, feel free to let me know, because I, it's possible I might have just forgotten or gotten sidetracked. Um, I teach another class after this, so sometimes I get busy with that. So um, welcome, everyone. Uh, we're heading into another weekend. Thank goodness. Today, we are going to talk about animated GIFs and making animated GIFs. Um, I'm excited about making animated GIFs for a couple of reasons. The main reason is that I can text them to my friends and family and use them in the context of uh, my everyday gossip. So um, we're thinking about uh, making animated GIFs two ways today. I'm going to show you how to make an animated GIF from a frame set, or what most people would commonly call a photo burst. Um, and we'll talk about ways uh, that you could maybe make that potentially more interesting. And we'll also talk a little bit about how to make a frame-by-frame -frame animation in Photoshop. So um, before we jump into this, does anyone have any questions about anything? Scanning, scanning. OK, great. So um, the first thing I'm going to do uh, when I get into Photoshop is I'm going to do things a little bit differently. I'm not going to open a file um, in this case, uh, because we're actually looking for a bunch of files. Um, let me show you the frame set that I have. Um, it's right here. It's from my phone. Um, so with most uh, contemporary cell phones, you should be able to take a photo burst by holding down the button when you go to take a picture. You just stay on there, and it'll take a bunch of pictures. Um, this photo burst is nothing really special. Um, it's my partner operating a really old drill. And then he comes back up. Um, so it looks like I have about uh, 30 frames here. 37 frames. That's kind of a lot for a GIF. Um, if we look at when we look at some uh, GIFs uh, next class on Tuesday, um, you'll notice that really all it takes to make a GIF are two frames, right? One and then another one. Um, some of the best GIFs that I've ever seen on the internet have only two or three frames um, because they're just so funny. They don't need a hundred frames. Um, but um, obviously, uh, you know, with more frames, you get kind of a smoother look. So let's go ahead and bring this into Photoshop. So we're going to go into the Photoshop Start screen, and we'll go to File, um, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. And what that is going to do is it's going to load all of those files into their own layer in Photoshop. So uh, we can just uh, click the Browse button here. And I have my folder kind of waiting in a convenient location. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and select these by using the Shift key, kind of the old-fashioned way. And click Open, and then click OK. It would be extremely rare for your photo burst images not to be organized by file, num file name number. Um, but if for some reason they aren't, you would have to make sure that they're going in a numerical order if you want them to load correctly. Um, I have never seen a photo burst that's not numbered. So don't worry too much about that. Um, so now you can see that all of these frames 
have been brought in as separate layers. So we have our 37 layers right there. And, you know, just, I mean, they're totally just regular layers. I could do anything that I wanted to these um, in Photoshop. Hint, hint. I could do anything I wanted in Photoshop. Um, so, <laughs> so, yeah, literally anything. Um, so the next step to kind of get this going, um, I'm going to go ahead and deactivate it so you can see how I would activate it. Um, let me go ahead and turn it off. So um, if you're in an environment that looks like this, um, sort of the next step for you is to create your, uh, or bring up your timeline palette. And it's under the window menu, like all your other palettes. So there it is. Uh, doesn't look like much right now because you have the option of creating a frame animation or creating a video timeline. And for this project, you would like to create a frame animation. So go ahead and click that button. And now you basically have an empty frame animation. So it's not completely empty. It's got your base layer on it. That's not too exciting. We're still sort of one step away from getting our getting all of our layers into the timeline. So if I go over here and I tell it to make frames from layers, that is sort of the magic password for getting your animation going. And it will populate um, all of these frames. So once it's finished populating the frames, um, and by the way, uh, this can start to get into a territory depending on the um, depending on the amazingness of your digital camera. This could get into a territory where Photoshop might start bogging down a little bit. Um, meaning, if you're if you have like an iPhone 11 that shoots at I don't know like 6,000 pixels or something. Um, Multiply that by 100, and you've got yourself maybe a little bit of a performance challenge for Photoshop. So one thing that I would probably do before I move too much further is to go ahead and go to image size. And um, when we're making GIFs, almost universally we're making GIFs for the internet. So it looks like each of my frames, um, I shot them with my late model pixel. So each of my frames are about 3,000 by 4,000 pixels. And that's just at sort of like the base quality mode. That's not even at high quality mode. So I would certainly probably, it might be a good idea to scale them down a little bit. So I'm going to change my units to pixels here. And probably, I think a good guideline for an internet GIF is that the largest dimension be no larger than 1,000 pixels. Um, and I think I'm pretty sure that's the guideline that I gave you on the assignment. So if we take this down to, um, to uh, 750 pixels by 1,000 pixels, it's going to be way smaller. And it's just going to make Photoshop behave a lot better. You, if, you feel, if you feel passionate about having a high quality, high resolution GIF, you can certainly go for it and then scale it down later like when you're done. Um, it's really up to you, and it's up to sort of like what your computer will put up with and how many frames you have, of course. So uh, at this point, I can go ahead, once my frames are populated down here, I can go ahead and just preview what this looks like. And it looks like, it looks OK. It's a little wobbly. Um, Probably one of the first things that I'm going to do here, just because this seems to have a case of too many frames, um, I'm going to go ahead and hit the Shift key, uh, sorry, the Command key, and I'm just going to delete every other frame. So I'm selecting every other frame right now. And I'm basically just going to cut the, the number of frames in half. Dispose. Uh, 
And then we can also go in here to delete frames. Delete the frames? Yes, please. So that takes us down to 18 frames, which seems a little bit more manageable. It's going to make it twice as fast, of course. You can affect the duration of the frames uh, down here. So you could have them uh, go for you know, quite a long time, um, or you could have them just go on uh, no delay. So uh, right now, these are all set to no delay, which means they'll play as fast as your computer will allow them to do. That's how most GIFs are set up. Um, so this one is just kind of going and going. You'll notice that it has that sort of like jarring there where it's looping. Um, it kind of goes, I can, hello. Kind of goes, 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 and then it crashes into that thing. Um, that's because it's uh, you know going from this frame and it's looping straight into this frame, which there's a big difference between those two frames, right? So one way that you can kind of get away from that is you can, you can try to go through the frames individually and find a, an end frame and a begin frame that are close to each other. That sounds like work. Um, so you can also go in here and I'm going to select all of the frames and copy them just with a command C. And then, uh, excuse me, and then paste them. Do, do, do. Let me try that one more time. So copy frames. And then I will paste the frames. And it gives you the option of pasting after the selection, which is useful. That's what I actually want in this case. You can also you know, do a, a, quite a few more things. But these are my new frames now. And I can basically take these new frames and select them all and uh, reverse them. So what that creates is basically the appearance of a never-ending loop where it kind of goes up and it comes back up. Instead of, instead of looping back to the original frame, you can see there it kind of comes back up. Um, it looks like, um, that looks like a mistake, but that's actually real. Um, that's the way my partner drills holes. He kind of goes in and he gives it an extra little <laughs> um, But we could, certainly, uh, we could certainly get rid of a couple of those frames if we didn't like it. Um, so let's see, it happens right around here. Yeah, so we could probably get rid of like these frames um, if we wanted to and just eliminate them from the sequence, right? Um, there's, no, there's no sort of like truth value here. It doesn't matter uh, you know, if the frames were originally there. Um, there's really no, so, no thing here of importance other than what you're um, trying to sort of deal with and what you want to have happen. So um, just a couple of sort of, uh, before we move into the next example, I want to show you uh, a couple of things. I want you to notice that when you go frame by frame, what is happening to the layers palette? Well, first of all, we deleted every other frame. So here's frame one. You can see this frame is visible. This frame is our in-between frame, so it's not going to be made visible on frame two. It's the next frame after that is made visible. Um, we could certainly have deleted every other layer as well, but there's no reason for it. Um, you know, they're just kind of hanging out there. They're not bothering anybody. Um, and those visible layers, as we play through, um, watch over here on the layers palette. It's happening too quickly to see. Um, but yeah, basically, it's scrubbing through the layers palette, uh, you know, upwards, and then it's going down for the backwards frames. Um, this becomes more important, like knowing the relationship of what's going on in the frame animation to the layers. This is going to become, become more important when we do the next animation, but I wanted to point it out to you right now. 
So let's say, hypothetically, that maybe we want to add a couple of, I don't know, things to this layer. I'm just literally, for efficiency's sake, I'm putting a big blob in our layer so that we can actually see it. Um, what's that going to do? Well, it's going to make that one layer show that wonderful blob, right? Um, if we wanted to maybe have another blob uh, of a different color, I can just switch colors right here. And um, we do need to actually make the layer visible to, to do that. I'll make it invisible again. So um, basically, now we have layer one and layer two sort of um, populated by these giant blobs. Now, what does that mean? Well, you can take kind of a leap of faith and say, wow, if I were really diligent and really invested in this, I could draw something or I could include some image and you know, have it change with every frame, right? That's what we're going to do next. Um, but I guess um, I get a common question about this assignment a lot. It's like, oh, can I just like turn in a photo burst and make it into a GIF? And um, I guess I would say that's that is literally the least you could do <laughs> um, for the assignment. So it would have to be, I don't know, some, some really amazing photo burst um, to sort of satisfy the creativity part of the assignment. Um, but by all means, you know, talk to your TA, because I don't want to say never. Um, I have seen some photo bursts that were like sort of produced, you know, and really like well made um, and well shot and had a really something actually kind of like interesting going on um, in them. But, but definitely, I think the, the point is that we would like you to sort of creatively engage with Photoshop. Um, so, so a photo burst could certainly be part of that, um, but probably not the sum total of the project. So let's go ahead and start another GIF. Um, before we do, I'm going to go ahead and go back a couple steps and get these blobs out of here. Thank you, Blobs. You've done your job. Um, I am going to export this as a GIF. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is the Save for Web Legacy exporter. Um, one of the reasons the Save for Web Legacy exporter is still part of Photoshop is because uh, people think it's really awesome. Um, particularly for web stuff, um, one of the reasons it's so great for web stuff is it allows you to compress uh, the GIFs through color compression. So you can see here, it looks like we have uh, the file, file type. These are all sort of web file types that it supports. We're going for GIF here. Um, adaptive, these are all different ways of compressing the color palette. And so adaptive is just fine. Um, if you want to go for kind of an old school look, you can reduce the number of colors. Um, I'm going to reduce it severely here. And you can see a couple of things have happened. Um, our color actually looks different because we have fewer colors that are sort of showing here. We also have this like really nice, nasty old school dithering which is uh, an attempt to take two colors and make them kind of fade into each other. Um, so if you're interested in kind of getting that early, early internet aesthetic or like an 8-bit aesthetic, you can actually do that um, here. Um, if you're interested in having it look really good, then by all means, use the maximum number of colors, and it will look the best that it possibly can. Um, with those extra colors um, comes a little bit of a file size. So right now, our file size is about 16.82 megabytes. That's pretty chunky for a GIF. Um, if I were to text this to my friend, they would probably be like waiting for maybe more than a second, um, maybe like 10 seconds or 15 seconds. Um, so if we wanted to uh, scale it down at this point, we could do that. Um, I think 16 megabytes is fine. Um, these are the kinds of issues that you have to think about, you know, if you're traveling a lot, if you are engaging with communities that do not have 
5G on their phone or whatever, you know, um, and it can it can totally be a thing. Um, as an artist, you know, you want people to be able to see your work. So um, not everybody has the the nicest, newest phone. Um, so if you're if you're concerned about accessibility issues, then please yeah keep an eye on your file size. Um, I'm going to go ahead and export this as is. I would call this like a high quality internet GIF, but not maybe a high quality GIF. So then this is what we have. So here's my drill. Um, if you if you open up your GIF and nothing happens, don't be sad. It might be your computer. Uh, it might be your operating system, or it might also be the preview software that you have lined up to preview GIFs. A good sort of fail-safe is to open it up in Google Chrome, the web browser, um, and it will sort of guarantee that it will see it as an animated GIF. Um, this, I think, is a problem more on the PC than it is on the Mac, but um, of course, the other thing is it is possible to export a GIF as a single frame from Photoshop. So you definitely want to avoid doing a file save as GIF. Uh, that will probably lead to a non-playable GIF. So uh, a good idea to make sure to remember to use this save for web legacy exporter. That will give you a playable GIF. OK, so let's try something completely different, but disturbingly similar. Um, I am going to open up a Photoshop file. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, excuse me, open rather than get a new file. So I have our sort of friendly vulture here. And um, what I think I'm going to do with our friendly vulture is um, I am going to take this vulture out of the background and make it fly across the sky. Um, and if we have time, I will make the sky a sort of rotating rainbow, because why not? Um, so the first thing that we have to do is we have to select this thing and get it out of its background, which we've done like a billion times. I'm going to use the magic wand tool. Very. Uh, hit shift to expand that selection. And pretty much from here, I can go ahead and um, invert the selection. I don't really have to invert the selection, actually, but I will. Um, and yeah, so now I can um, just get rid of some of these palettes. Um, I noticed this when I tried to do it last time. Um, notice that I just ac accidentally grabbed a little corner of the sky here. I'm going to go into Quick Mask, and I'm just going to uh, fix those corners. Because I want to do it right. OK. So now that's fixed. So basically, um, I could make a layer mask, and I guess I could do that. For something like a GIF, I don't know if I would bother with making a layer mask. Um, I think probably it can't hurt. So let's go ahead and sort of do it the right way. So I'm going to make a new layer, and uh, I'm going to uh, actually not make a new layer. I'll chuck this in the trash. I'm going to duplicate this layer. OK. And I'm going to use my uh, selection to make a layer mask on this background copy layer right now. So we'll go ahead and reveal the selection. Um, just to double check that we got what we wanted. Uh, yeah, OK, great. So now um, I really have to worry about what the background looks like. So. Let's sort of think through this. If I take this vulture um, on background copy and I move it along, um, does that vulture look like it's flying through the sky? Um, uh, yeah, if you mean that like two vultures are flying through the sky and uh, there's a vulture that seems to be static in the background. Um, 
So, so sort of part and parcel of removing this object from the background is also cleaning up the background to make it look like that object was never there. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just make this invisible for a second. And we're going to go ahead and basically like fix this um, so that it looks like solid blue sky. So it just so happens that one of the tools that we used last class will be really great for this, the patch tool. You could also use the content aware fill tool would be another. And notice that I'm being oh so careful not. Um, you really just need a rough sort of outline. Uh, also, make sure that you know which layer you're working on. That's a classic blunder. And I'm just going to come over here and say, OK, that's fantastic. So now um, I can deselect, and I have my background sort of like filled in and ready to be, ready to be animated upon. So the move tool right up here is going to be kind of my best friend for this. Know which layer you're working on. Probably say that 100 times today. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so I have some more sort of real estate. And I think I'm going to start back here. And basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just uh, duplicate this layer a few times. I'll probably duplicate it as I go. Um, also, probably rotating it is a good idea. Um, so that it doesn't just look like a thing that's like, um, it should, you know, sort of, uh, that was my vulture impression, by the way. Uh, it should be a thing that has some sort of like flow to it. So we're going to kind of rotate it a little bit as it goes. Um, not too much though. So we'll rotate this slightly that way. And just keep copying. Um, you may be asking yourself, uh, if I want to get this thing all the way across the screen, how many, how many uh, repetitions should I have? That's completely up to you. Uh, I think that it's really going to dictate the number of frames you have. I think in general, uh, more frames or more um, layers is going to equal a more smooth looking animation. More layers equals more work. So there's that. Um, but let's do it with like six or seven layers and see how it looks. So I'm just duplicating, and I think this will probably be my last frame. Um, it's kind of nice when you can see all the frames on the screen at once um, because it can kind of give you a real clue as to what that motion path is going to look like um, and how those frames are lined up in relationship to each other. So at this point, you're like, oh, that's great, Meg, thanks. Uh, we have a bunch of layers, but we don't really have an animation. True. Probably I would preview it uh, thusly just to check and make sure everything's there and that it's in the order that you want it to be. And um, from here, I think we can do the whole um, create frame animation. Yes, and create, uh, make frames from layers. So there's a couple of things going on here. We're going to have to go into each frame and sort of think about it. So one thing is that the so-called background layer um, doesn't look like it populated. So here, um, with each frame, we're just going to click through each frame, and we're going to make the background visible. Thusly, yep, just like that. Um, if you're going this route of making this type of an animation, um, my advice to you would actually be to get as much done in layers as you can before you open up your frame animation, um, because it can be quite confusing to kind of go back and forth, um, because each frame is really just a set of layers um, that are either visible or invisible. So let's go ahead and look at it now. 
That's looking more respectable. Um, if we turn this show transform controls box off, that'll go away. Could we have more frames? Uh, yes, we could. Um, is it really like, hmm, should we do that? Do we have time? Yeah, I think we do have time. Um, I'm going to make this uh, a little bit nicer. So I'm going to put a frame in between uh, each of these frames. So uh, hello. Hello. I totally am not touching it. I don't know what's that. Let me see if I can toggle the lights. Sorry. Okay, we're back. Anybody that's watching the recording, I, there should be a pause in the recording. Okay, so yeah, so I can go to this layer and just kind of basically, you know, stick it in between. Um, and do that for each of these. Now, of course, I might want to make some adjustments here. There's quite a bit of rotation, it looks like. So I'll want it to kind of look like it belongs. And then this one would get another layer. Now, you'll notice that I'm not spending too much time looking down at the frames, um, and that's because I'm probably going to just get rid of all the frames and reload them from the layer stack. Um, because adding in all these uh, frames individually sounds like a lot of work. Um, so, duplicate. And then one more. Duplicate. And I'm going to rotate this one slightly, too. OK, so much tighter configuration, you can see. Um, I'm just going to select all of these frames. And I'm going to delete them. And then I'm going to reload them uh, from make frames from layers. And we're going to have to do that thing where we turn the background on again. So by the way, you can have as many layers be a part of a frame as you want. Um, personally, I think more than two or three, it gets a little confusing um, and a little hard to keep track of. But, you know, uh, depending on how many frames you have, that's also another consideration. OK, so now we should see it's quite a bit smoother. And I'll get rid of that transform control box. There are definitely some wobbles. Those are the kinds of things that, you know, you can take care of if you have quite a bit of time on your hands. Um, now, what else could we do to sort of like amp this up? Well, I think probably um, a good thing that I uh, also, I made a promise and I didn't forget about it. Um, I said something about rainbow layers, right? So it looks like we've got 12 frames here. So I think I'm going to get rid of frame one. Um, excuse me. Nah. Um, Maybe I won't. Um, I can live with 12 frames. So for now, I'm going to make an adjustment layer. And the adjustment layer I'm going to make is going to be a, a color layer. 
So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with pure red, and we're going to go down uh, the color spectrum to pure blue. And we're going to do it in a way that is sort of mathematically sound. So um, what does that mean? Well, uh, it means like right here, where it's sort of pure uh, saturation. And um, you can see that, let's see, we have our HSB palette. Um, let's just go ahead. And we're basically going to be operating in this level of pure hues. Um, so I'll go ahead and click OK. I'm not going to do anything to these right now. Um, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and pile them up. <laughs> So I'm going to make another uh, solid color pattern. And I'm just going to drag this down a tiny bit and go for the next pure hue. Um, and then I'm going to do that more than once. Like probably, I'll probably do it six or seven times at least. I could certainly do it for every item in the in the uh, every frame, which would be 12 times, but I don't know if we'll have time for that. So I'm heading towards uh, purple right now. And again, just going for that pure hue. Doo -doo -doo. Down here now, and we're getting into the purples. And now we're getting into the deeper purples. And pretty soon we'll be comfortable in the blue. OK, so it looks like I have eight of these. And you can see that they kind of follow a gradient, a gradient pattern. Um, one thing I'm going to do right now is um, I saw the slight look of shock on your face when you were like, oh my god, that color is like so bright and kind of offensive. Um, are you really going to use that as the background? No. Um, I'm going to select all of these layers. And uh, I'm going to go down to maybe the hue uh, section. And then we're going to just uh, turn that down even a little bit more. So it's just going to be like a tint um, that's applied to each frame. Um, and so that way, you sort of have the gradient of the sky kind of coming back. So basically, now I want to um, make sure that I get rid of this uh, frame. And on frame two, I'm going to go ahead and select the red. And here, I'm going to select the slightly more pink, um, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just going to go down and do them in order. Um, and you know, the reason I'm doing this is just a really long way to say that you can fade colors uh, in and out of frames. And it's kind of cool. Um, you could certainly do this with like, uh, OK, so now let's check out that. In and they fade pretty nicely. This is kind of driving me crazy, though, this little, uh, this little wobble here. Let me see if I can fix that. So I think part of it is this one's going down. So let me find that layer. It's right here. So yeah, it's definitely this layer. OK, so I feel like this layer, this layer seems to be bouncing up a little bit. So I'm just going to drag it down a tiny bit. Slightly better. Anyway, uh, that's definitely the sort of thing where you know you'd have to, you would have to like get all the layers back on the screen and sort of like really evaluate. <laughs> Uh, really evaluate like what's going on, you know, with the relationship of the tips of the wings to each other and that kind of thing. Um, 
but I think we got pretty close without sort of like breaking our time limit here. Um, so this is just kind of a sneak peek of what you can do with GIF. Um, it's super, I don't know, I find GIFs just so endearing in every possible way. So um, they're sort of like little, little magical things that you get on your phone and like, have you ever not been happy to get one? Um, so have fun with this and, you know, make something that you can share with people. Um, and uh, who knows? Maybe you'll uh, start sort of a, uh, some sort of thing with your friends. So uh, I'm uh, going to show you a lot of GIFs, uh, kind of like an academic analysis of GIFs and culture and in art uh, on Tuesday. And then from there, we're going to jump into video art and do some video editing. All right. Hey, everyone, have an awesome weekend. And I'll see you. Uh, Oh, the ghost is gone. I'll see you uh, on Tuesday.